This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Fiscally responsible, financial geniuses, monetary magicians. These are things people say about drivers who switch their car insurance to Progressive and save hundreds. Visit Progressive.com to see if you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states or situations. She needs to do a podcast since she never got her due. She's a big lesbian and a loud mouth Jew, Jew, Jew. With a gasket always ready to blow, you listen. Fuck off. Hey everyone, uh, welcome to It's Judy Show with Judy Gold. I'm your host, Judy Gold, and uh, wow, happy Labor Day. Happy fucking Labor Day. Well, I have a lot to talk about today, as you can imagine. And one thing I really want to talk about is there was an article in the Times today, uh, Sunday. It's Sunday night. I'm recording this on Sunday night after my show at the post office cabaret. And I wanted to talk about this article, which was talking about the grieving of the end of summer. I definitely have that grieving. I love the summer. I hate when the summer ends. And it's not like I'm miserable in the other, I'm kind of miserable in the winter. I can't fucking take the winter. I used to be like fine with it. No, it's not even a fun, it's not, there's no snow anymore. It's just cold and shitty and rainy and shitty and cold. And I don't like being cold anymore. I really don't. But I do get a little depressed at the end of the summer because I really love the summer, you know, we're in P-Town and we love to go swimming in the ocean. I play tennis every day. It's warm. I don't have to carry coats. When I travel, I don't have to bring a shitload of coats and coats and sweaters and coats and socks and shit. I just, yeah, I love this. And there's something magical about it, about, you know, the, the day being longer. I don't know. I love the summer. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. And I have this feeling every summer and it sucks. So I do think at some point I'm going to want to go somewhere warm in the summer, but it's not like I'm not going to know that, you know, I'm still going to know it's not really summer. It's just warm here, but it's not really summer. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Because even in the United States, there's places that are still cold at night in the summer. But, you know, 50, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Like, L.A. was fine. I, I didn't I didn't mind the weather. Yeah, I, I got it. I'm not, I'm done. I'm a Jew, and I'm done with the fucking weather. I'm done. I love, I love the summer. So I'm very depressed that the summer is going away, and I'm going to allow myself to grieve. But I'm going to be in P-Town. Oh, I should tell you about my date since we're in the beginning of the podcast. I'm going to be in P-Town until September 8th at the Post Office Cabaret. And then I will be in New York City on September 12th, where uh, I'm going to be interviewing Mary Trump at the 92nd Street Y. Uh, then I'm going to Montreal to shoot a short film. Then I we are packing up the house because we're renovating. Finally, I'm very excited. And then, you know, we've got the Rosh Hashanah. We've got the Yom Kippur. I'm going to um, Colorado for a gig on October 8th and 9th. I'm going to be uh, in Provincetown. I'm going to be in Provincetown for uh, Women's Week, the uh, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th. Then I'm going to Israel to do comedy for Kobe. I got a lot going on. I got a lot of traveling. Not my favorite, but just, you know, I'm going to be posting all of my gigs. Chicago, November 8th, uh, 9th, and 10th 
at the Big Gay Cabaret. That is November 8, 9, 10. Get your fucking, you know, asses there. Also, uh, Poughkeepsie, New York on uh, November 16th. The Boca Black Box on November 23rd. Aventura, the 22nd. I just did that in backwards. But anyway, so that's that. But um, this podcast, we are ranting today. And okay, and that sound that you hear, that is my, I sit on a big fucking yoga ball, like a big, huge one. It's so comfortable. But I have noticed, I don't know, my earphones are fucking hurting my ears. Like I don't need that shit. They didn't hurt my ears before. Does anyone else have problems with the earphones, like they're the big earphones that go around here and they fucking hurt my ears. My ears hurt, whatever. So I'm, I'm depressed about summer, but I, I need to talk about the hostages. So I'm going to talk about that now because this situation, the fact that these hostages were being held in Rafa and they were alive they were alive, but the um, IDF came to find them, and they were shot in the head. And one of them is American, Hirsch Goldberg Pollen. It, it is disgusting to watch this anti-Semitism, this fucking willful ignorance on these college campuses. You know what? They are not pro-Palestinian. They are pro-Hamas and they are anti-Israel. And they're on the wrong side and they're dumb. They're dumb. Because anyone who can call Hamas resistance is a fucking idiot. And I'm really angry about this. It's like, you know what? Israel is a tiny country trying to defend itself. The Jews, how much shit have we fucking been through? And this anti-Semitism, this, and, 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 and I, I just don't fucking get it. If you hate Jews, as I've said a million times, then don't live with all the contributions we have made. To the world. To the world. I'm so fucking mad. It's just infuriating to what, like this college. So, so now, I guess, at Maryland, University of Maryland, okay, on September 7th, which is the date of the massacre of Jews, there were thousands of terrorists that came into uh, Israel, okay? And they are, are going to allow a campus rally by an anti-Israel group on October 7th. On October 7th, the date that 1,200 Jews were murdered, raped, burned alive, Hostages were taken, and they're going to allow an anti-Israel rally. You fucking scum. You are scum. These people should not have jobs. It's so interesting, the people who reach out when, you know, these hostages uh, were found dead. And there are people who uh, will be like, oh, thinking of you. And then there are people who say nothing, who say nothing, nothing. You know, Jews reach out to each other. I'm sick over this. I can't stop crying. Why is this happening? And there's so few of us. Every one of us knows in some way someone who is a victim of October 7th. Every Jew in the world is connected to that because there's not a lot of us. How dare you, University of Maryland? And did you see they stopped traffic to do a prayer, a Muslim prayer? Hamas is so emboldened by this behavior. Do you think they would have had the guts 
to kill those hostages if they didn't think every fucking idiot in the United States is like, oh, go Hamas. You're not pro-Palestinian because Hamas treats Palestinians like shit. They treat them like shit garbage. You are, you have blood on your hands. You are part of the terrorism problem. No, Israel is not perfect. No, Netanyahu is not the greatest person in the world. But fuck you. Fuck you for aligning yourself with a terrorist organization that has raped, kidnapped, burned people, broken up families, eradicated families. It's just so fucking infuriating. And I'm not being funny because it's not fucking funny. Speak up, people. Speak up. This is, you have Jewish friends. We're hurting. We are hurting. Jews are hurting right now. Where the fuck are you? I, I just, I can't. Elisa and I are sick over it, but so is everyone else. So is every other Jew. Stop, just stop it. If this happened in the United States, it, this would be over already. And yeah, there'd be people protesting, but there'd be plenty of people like, okay, well, what are we supposed to do? I mean, they came in and raped and kidnapped and kidnapped and burned and, and put babies in ovens. Like, like these people are fucking not even human. And, and these people, so many of them are getting paid. They're, they're just ruining these co Jewish college kids don't feel safe. They, these kids got attacked. I think it was university of Pittsburgh. Two kids go on a Shabbat dinner attacked by a guy with a bottle. Like what the fuck is going on? Speak up people. I have spoken up every time for injustice. Where the fuck are you? Where are you? Oh, it's so infuriating. When you think about businesses that are selling through the roof, sure, you think about a great product, a cool brand and brilliant marketing, but an often overlooked secret is actually the businesses behind the business making selling simple. For millions of businesses, that business is Shopify. Nobody does selling better than Shopify. They're the home of the number one checkout on the planet and the not so secret shop pay that boosts conversions up to 50%, meaning way less carts going abandoned and way more sales happening. So if you're into growing your business, your commerce platform better be ready to sell wherever your customers are scrolling or strolling, on the web, in your store, in their feed, and everywhere in between. Businesses that sell more, sell on Shopify. Upgrade your business and get the same checkout all birds and skims use. Sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash start selling, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash start selling to upgrade your selling today. Shopify.com slash start selling. So anyway, I'm upset and I'm really angry and I'm, I just, you know, I, Oh, it's just awful. And the faces of the parents of these hostages. I mean, the agony. It's awful. Brutally murdered. And in the in the papers, they died. They died. That's what they say. Autopsy finds. Okay. The six hostages were shot multiple times at close range in the past 48 to 72 hours. Hirsch Goldberg Pollen, Eden Yerushalami, Yerushalami, Ori Danino, Alex Lobanov, Carmel Gott, Almag Sarusi. They all have parents. They all, they have siblings, they have aunts and uncles and friends, and they were fucking held captive for 11 months and then shot 48 hours before they were going to be found and freed. What the fuck? You should be outraged. 
And I don't want to hear about, oh, but what about, yeah, what about this and that? You know, no one wants innocent Palestinians dying. But, you know, Hamas shouldn't put them, use them as human shields or put um, weapons in, in hospitals and schools. Do your fucking homework. These people were beautiful people and young. I can't. I'm so upset. Okay. And the anti-Semitism, I'm fucking sick of it. I'm sick of it. It's been going on forever, but whatever. Okay, so that was that. So I'm going to actually probably talk about this again because I'm so angry, but I did have some incredible, some positive things happen this week. So I, you know, I'm doing my show. I did go to Fire Island last week. I went to Fire Island. I had to Listen to this. I had to, I drove to Hyannis from here, which is in a little over an hour. I took the plane to LaGuardia and then I got in a car to go to the ferry and it was, there was so much traffic and I was in the back of this, I got, you know, I order on the car service, a luxury car. So it wasn't really, it was just a Mercedes, but it wasn't a luxury. It was an older Mercedes. And it's like, just cause you have a Mercedes doesn't mean whatever. It wasn't a big, huge one. And the guy was like, you know, how when they stomp on the brakes and you're the, the, like, he was, I, I was going to miss the ferry. So he kept going fast and then slowing down and then fast and then trying to pass people. And I was like, I'm going to fuck. I literally was like, I'm going to puke. I am going to vomit. He's like, Oh, open the window. I opened the window. And he's like, I'm trying to get you. I was like, I don't care. I, I just whatever. So I finally got to the ferry and it left. I was 25 minutes late because there's so much fucking traffic. And so I had to take a ferry to another part of Fire Island called Atlantique, like Atlantique's Roadshow. Okay. So I go to Atlantique and then I have to get a water taxi from Atlantique to Ocean Beach. Then I get off with, I don't carry my luggage the whole time. Then I get off the water taxi. I go to the venue to do a sound check. Then I go to my friend's house to get ready. Then I go to do the show. Then we eat at this great place called Rachel's. Then I go back to my friend's house. We hang out and talk. Then I get up for the 740 ferry. And then I get in another car and go to LaGuardia. And then I get to Hyannis from LaGuardia. And then I drive back here. I, I'm old. I'm old. Now my shoulders are fucking killing me. My neck hurts. It's a lot. But the show is great. But it's a lot. I'm getting too old for this. Like my body. I used to be able to take the red eye. I used to be able to. No more. I can't. It's just, it's a lot. So I do love what I do, but my body, it doesn't love it. So I wasn't in P town on Thursday. I was in, uh, ocean beach, but, uh, a couple of, uh, shows ago here in Provincetown at the Provincetown. Oh, by the way, I got an excellent review in the P town, uh, the Provincetown, um, magazine. I got a great review. So thank you. What's the guy's name? I, I have to look it up, but anyway, fantastic, lovely, wonderful review. Used a photo from like, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, it's like, can you just ask me for a fucking current photo? That's not me in it, it like dressed up as like a clown. Like, come on. Anyway. So after my show, um, this woman comes up to me and says, my son is here. He's in the bathroom he, this was his first comedy show. He's 14. And I was like, Oh my God. And it was a great show, but I was like, you know, this 14 year old boy here with this mom. And he, she said, I wanted to take him to his first comedy show. He loves comedy. And I brought him here. And so I was like, Oh my God, thank you. And then I met him outside. He waited for me and he's like, hi, I'm Liam. So Liam, I love you. Uh, and he said, this was my first comedy show ever. And you know, I was thinking you always remember your first comedy show. Like for me, it was an amazing feeling that I am going to be in this kid is going to remember me for the rest of his life because I was the first comedian he ever saw live. I mean, that's incredible. And he loved it. A 14 year old boy 
l was laughing and laughing and laughing. His mother said he was laughing. He said he was laughing. I mean, that is what comedy is all about. I can't get a Netflix special. I mean, I could say, don't put negative shit out, but they won't give me a Netflix special. They won't give me a Hulu special. They won't give me an HBO special. I've never been funnier. I don't have enough followers on, on social media, but I am fucking, I love the craft of stand up. I'm really good at it. I fucking love it. You know, I made history with this kid and yet I can't, I, it's, it's infuriating. Being a woman over 60 it, as a comedian, it's not n not easy, not easy. But, you know, it's funny is I bumped into Marilyn May, who, if you don't know who Marilyn May is, first of all, she did my podcast years ago. Look it up. She's uh, the most, she's an icon. She's a legend. She did, uh, she, uh, she was on Johnny Carson. She's a singer. On Johnny Carson, uh, uh, like 76 times more than any other singer. She's so, f and she's still working at 96 years old. So I bump into her uh, on the street. And then we were on the same plane when I was going to um, shit land in the shit car where I was going to fucking puke. And I was like, oh, it's, you know, she, we were talking about the business. And I'm like, it's just hard being a, a comedian over 60. And she's 96. She's like, you're telling me, but she's just, she's, if you could see her, she's going to be at 54 below in New York in September, October, November. Like if you get a chance to see Marilyn May, it will change your life. It's something you should do. Um, so she's amazing. And I got to be on the plane with her and she wouldn't even let me carry her bags or anything, but whatever. She's a fucking icon. Um, but it was so nice to meet this kid. I mean, how cool is that? You know, I, I, I could complain about the fact that I don't have specials and people are like, I don't understand it. I don't know. I don't, you know, and it's like all this and that. And I, oh, you should do that. And you should do this. It's like, I love being on stage. I love live performance. I don't have the bandwidth to be creating content all day. I'd rather write jokes and read books and and, and do my craft, but it's, ch the rules have changed, but I do think in a way, a lot of the stand up has gone down. I don't know how to say this has been, um, it's not as substantive as it was because comics have to spend so much time on social media, creating content so they get followers and they can get gigs. It's just, uh, whatever. It just cheapens the art of stand up, but there's so many funny people out there. Um, and I just love, I love it. I still fucking love it. So Liam, it was my pleasure and you're an awesome kid. Okay. This week's episode is sponsored by better help. Now, you know, I am a huge advocate for therapy. I talk therapy. I like physical therapy too, but you know, I'm talking about talk therapy. I've been in therapy since I'm 18 years old. There is nothing better, nothing, nothing better. And it is a stressful time. You know, we just had an election, it's the holidays, and we're going to have to spend uh, family time or not spend family time. It's a decision you might make in therapy because therapy is really the best way, the only way to process your feelings, anxiety, depression, everything. I've been doing it for over 40 years. I know what I'm talking about. So if you've been thinking about starting therapy, if you thought about it for years and just didn't do it, please give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient. It's flexible. It's suited to your schedule. You you go to betterhelp.com slash Judy Gold. You fill out a brief questionnaire. You get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch your therapist any, at any time for no additional charge. I've done that multiple times in my life, switch therapists. It is, it works. It works. And I know a lot of people who have used BetterHelp and they love it. So find comfort this December with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com dot com slash Judy Gold today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Judy Gold. You're welcome.
So that was another thing I wanted to talk about. Okay. And then I need to discuss something. So we're in province. Oh, by the way, I was in the Provincetown Tennis Club. I was in the semifinals for the B group. There's an A group of the really good players and then B group. And I played mixed doubles and I was in the semifinals. And we lost in a tie break. But whatever. It doesn't matter. It was fun. Um, but I love playing tennis. And uh, tennis, by the way, is the sport that adds the most years to your life. It adds 9.7 years to your life. And all like jogging adds like two years or something or three years. Okay. Anyway, I, you know, so all summer we, we go to people's homes. We, you know, I have people here, you know, we go to dinner parties, whatever. I have noticed now you can get mad at me. Uh, I'm going to say something controversial. Oh, like I get like whatever, but Jews, Italians, and I'm pretty sure Greek people, when they have dinner parties or when they have people over, they have plenty of food. They have more food than you need. Okay. Everyone else, especially Protestants do not have enough fucking food. Don't invite people over and like get, oh, we'll, we'll only need this much. Get more than you, like, I don't understand it. No, we don't want crudite and then a bowl of soup. No. And whatever you're getting, get a ton of it. I, I don't understand people who don't, who don't buy enough food. Okay. So that's number one. Like, honestly, if you're going to ha have a party, don't, do not skimp on the fucking food. Okay. But here's the other thing. We have people over. I have sh lovely Shabbat dinners. We've been doing Shabbat at the beach, which I need to tell you about. But um, don't come over to my house. I invite you over for dinner. I cook. I bake a challah. I do whatever. Even on the nights, I, I don't bake a challah because it's not Shabbat. Whatever. I need to ring the bell a couple times. Do not come to my house for a meal and bring me a shitty bottle of wine. For like $6.99, $12.99, like piece of shit. Yes, I know there's great bottles of wine for $12. No, I want a fucking good bottle of wine. Like do not skimp on the fucking shitty wine. It's annoying. Like, and I know that you picked it up on the way here and you didn't take any time. Like, oh, this looks good or the label looks good. Do not bring shitty wine to my fucking house. I, I can't stand it. Cheap people. I just can't. Oh, or don't bring the wine that you like that you know I don't like. Bring then, then what you do, you bring two bottles. You bring the thing you want to drink and then you bring the thing that other people want to drink. The people that are fucking hosting you and paid for all the goddamn food. What is with, I can't stand cheap people. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. Spend the extra $5, $10. It, uh, whatever. Okay. Okay, that's that. So I've been doing, as if you follow me, you know, I've been uh, making these amazing challahs, uh, Jay Cohen's recipe, and they're so delicious and I'm getting really good at it and they look great and they smell great and they taste great. So, uh, you know, I, I've been at the beach, so I decided let's go and light the candles and do the prayer over the wine and the challah at the beach. So I bring a table and I invite friends and we do the Shabbat at the beach. So the last two Fridays that we have done Shabbat at the beach, okay, there have been this, there was, there's this family with two kids. They got to be between two and three. May, I don't know. I got to ask Elisa, but she's upstairs. She's mad at me. Shocking. Uh, they're obese. They're obese kids, and they're running around the entire beach naked and, like, rolling around in the sand, and the, the 
the parents are just sitting there. They just run around. They run around in front of people just naked. And, you know, we our friend was there, and she's like, well, in Switzerland. And it's like, we're not in Switzerland. And I'm trying to do Shabbat with these two obese children, like, running around, one with the penis and one with the vagina. I don't get It's not sanitary. They're rolling around in the sand. I don't understand parenting. Like, if, if you don't know how to be a parent, don't have children. Uh, and, not, and we're standing, like, just imagine this. It's a beautiful sunset. And we're like, you know, Baruch Adonai Elohim. And they're like running around naked. These obese children. I just am saying obese so you can picture it in your head. I mean, it would have been bad if they were not obese. It's bad, period. But, you know, there's an issue if the ch- the children are two or three. Three, maybe. Two and a half. And obese. Already. That means that they're not getting food that, that they need or the right kind of food. And their parents suck. So stop being a shitty parent. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's it. I, I, I can't talk anymore. I'm so upset about about the uh, hostages. I don't know. I'm I'm recording this on Sunday night and Tuesday is when this will be, you know, posted. And I just, I don't know what's going to happen in a day. I don't know, you know, you know, this all eyes on Rafa, everyone, all eyes on Rafa, you know, Israel shouldn't defend itself. Well, that's where they are. That's why Israel was going into Rafa. That's where Yahya Sinwar is, obviously. And, you know, Hamas, if they thought everyone fucking hated them, that maybe they wouldn't have shot those hostages. And Israel has offered them uh, 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 ceasefire agreements and they keep saying no. So stop it. And fuck you, University of Maryland. Rutgers is on the shit list too. Um, That's where I went. Um, But anyway, I'm just, you know, it's a weird week. It's not a happy time for the Jews like it ever was. And, um, you know, reach out to your Jewish friends. See how they're doing. We all know someone. You know, someone just said, oh, uh, Hirsch's father is so-and-so's cousin. And I, I'm like, of course. We're, we're one one degree of separation because there's so few of us. So stop it. All right. I wasn't, I wasn't even going to do a podcast this week because I was so upset. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. And Elisa said, Judy, do it. Talk about it. Get it out. So I'm doing it. I'm a gay I'm a woman. I'm a Jew. I'm a Democrat. And you know what? All you people who are posting, uh, some of the, some of these, um, uh, people that I I follow, uh, they're, they're Zionists and they're very pro-Israel or they're very anti anti anti-Semitism or they're this or that telling me that, uh, the reason that we're going to shit is because of the Democrats and because people are not obeying God. No, sorry. It's not because people aren't religious. So fuck your religiousness. That has nothing to do with it. There's more than one way to be a good Jew. And it doesn't mean you have to do, do it your way. Cause that's not the only way to be a good Jew or a good person. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, people. To all the Jewish people who listen to this podcast, you know what? I feel your pain. And, you know, you have every right to be angry. You have every right to be infuriated. You have every right to not talk to people, to disown people. You have every right to do that. Because we're not going to fucking take it anymore. You liked us when we were all victim-y in the Holocaust. Everyone felt sorry for us. Well, now we're fighting back and you and everyone fucking hates us. Go fuck yourselves. Be out and proud as a Jew. And to all our friends and allies, thank you. Thank you so much. Anyway, that's all I have to say. I, I don't even know what else to say. Oh, I should tell you more of my dates um, coming up. Post Office Cabaret till September 8th. 
I'm excited for Ben's games too. He's playing Division One. Uh, and then uh, Mary Trump at the 92nd Street Y on September 12th. I'm um, going to be doing Stephanie Rule's show soon. It's Rosh Hashanah. I'm going to Colorado. It's Yom Kippur. I'm going, I'm coming back to uh, Provincetown for Women's Week. I got so much going on. So much going on. Uh, and then I'll be turning 62 on November 15th, and I can't fucking believe it. It goes by so goddamn fast. Um, so that's it. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, FYI, this podcast is is produced by Laura Vogel, edited by Colin Schmeling, marketed by Haley Dircher. And um, the theme song is by my beautiful friend, Lauren Gold, who is so fucking talented. And August 30th, this past Friday, was my mother's birthday. She would have been 102. I think about her every day. I miss her, but I'm so glad she's not here to see this because it is a fucking shit show and it hurts so remember that people when you make a stupid statement or don't do your due diligence diligence can't talk um but i'll be seeing you guys soon because i'm coming to a city near you baby um thank you all so much for listening and as we always say so long 